In an attempt to block the addition of a question about citizenship on the 2020 census, several state attorneys general have signaled their intent to sue the Trump administration. The effort is being spearheaded by New York's Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, and comes in response to Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross's decision to introduce the question, arguing that it was needed to determine the portion of the population eligible to vote. Critics, however, have denounced the citizenship question as a method of depressing response from non-citizens and illegal immigrants, serving to reduce the population count in predominantly Democratic areas where a large proportion of immigrants reside in advance of redistricting in three years' time. Among those vocal critics, a U.S. representative from New York, Grace Meng, and we are delighted to have her back on the program. Congresswoman, welcome to you. Always nice to have you here with us. Thanks, Jack. It's great to be back. So I know there had been conversations among um, members of, of the House of Representatives and indeed particular committees uh, with the secretary about whether or not this question was going to be included in the 2020 census. Were you surprised when the decision was made that it would be included? Well, just uh, recently, we had in our appropriations subcommittee of Commerce, Justice, and Science, which funds the United States Census Bureau, Secretary Wilbur Ross came to testify, and I asked him directly about the potential inclusion of this question. Uh, and we uh, were hopeful that he would take back helpful information information and not include it. So, of course, we were disappointed, but not fully surprised that the question was ultimately added in. You have noted that you believed it would result in a flawed census uh, if that question was included. What do you mean by flawed and why do you think that would be so? So it's not just me that believes that. It's at least four former directors of the Census Bureau, uh, folks who have worked under both Republican and Democratic uh, presidential administrations. And we believe that less people uh, may uh, want to fill out the census or may be concerned. The main mission and purpose of the constitutionally mandated census is to count every living person. It's not to count only citizens or to count only people who are registered to vote. It's to count every living citizen, uh, every living person, excuse me. And so we, we need to make sure that more people are filling out the census and anything that could possibly detract from that is not acceptable. You represent an extraordinarily diverse community your constituency here. What do you think the impact would be of the inclusion of this question on, on your constituents? Well, we already saw the impact of not having sufficient people fill out the census uh, in 2010, where New York State uh, lost two congressional seats. So the last thing we need to do is to have another situation that would make it harder to have an accurate count. And this doesn't only affect wonderfully diverse communities like my district, but this affects both immigrants and uh, longtime citizens, longtime Americans. Uh, this affects, affects funding that uh, amounts to billions of dollars that uh, covers the entire country. I touched on briefly some of the arguments that have been offered in support of including, including this question here. And essentially, the, the, the primary one is, is essentially this. If you're counting people who are not indeed citizens and they are not indeed going to be voting, that in some ways, the argument goes, you're going to skew the electoral map. You're going to have numbers of people here that would have an impact on representation, but they're not people who are citizens who are actually doing voting. And the argument has been there's just something basically unfair about that. How do you respond to that argument? Again, the Constitution requires that every living person is counted. Uh, apportionment is a accomplished on behalf of anyone living in a community, uh, not just for citizens. Congresspersons and representatives aren't just for citizens, and they aren't just for people who are registered to vote. I'm proud to represent uh, more than 700,000 people, citizens and non-citizens, Republicans and Democrats. And so we have to make sure that we are counting every living person as is constitutionally required. I mentioned the fact that a, a, a coalition of attorneys general have bound together and, and are going to challenge this. 
Uh, sort of a quick two-part last question for you, if I could. What do you think their prospects of success would be? And what ability do you think the Congress might have to affect uh, this situation and indeed to preclude this question from being included in the 2020 census? Well, I am so thankful for the leadership shown by our very own New York State Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, and having a coalition of uh, multi-state attorney generals uh, putting forth this lawsuit. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more in the upcoming weeks. Um, as for Congress goes, uh, we are supportive of legislation. For example, Congresswoman Maloney has legislation that would prohibit last-minute questions from being added. My top Democrat of my subcommittee on appropriations will also be putting forth legislation to stop uh, questions like this from being added and funded. Well, Congresswoman May, I want to thank you, as always. Uh, we're always delighted to have you join us here, and we can share in these conversations. But I do want to thank you for spending some time and, and giving your thoughts on all of this. We'll look forward to talking with you again real soon. You be well. You too. Thanks, Jack.